Hey everybody, um, wanted to make a follow-up video on that uh, last one that I did on um, Travis CI and how I use that with GitHub leading up to this GitHub for Education thing. So what I wanted to talk about today is how I use GitHub for Education um, to kind of manage my repos and manage my assignments. And this is the first year I'm going all in on it and I'm really, really liking it. I've been using GitHub for years but with my own scripting and tools. Um, but this is pretty cool so um, I'm going to take you through it. So first off, you're going to want to set up your um, GitHub for Education account if uh, for your school or if you're a teacher, I guess. Let me see if this link is right because uh, I'm not sure. Um, uh, yeah, so you, and, um, you could certainly join the GitHub Education community, uh, go into GitHub Classroom. But one of the first things you want to do is you want to get GitHub for Education. And so to do that, click over on this link, and I'll put these links onto the um, onto the the blog post that I write to go with this. You know, fill in all, all the stuff, not really a big deal, and then send your application. Um, once you're approved for that, you're going to want to go to this site, um, and this will all be in the, the you know, if you if you read that GitHub for Education page and you know, read through everything. But just to give you the ideas. With GitHub for Education, what you want to do is you want to set things up. Uh, you want to make an organization for your classes. Um, and it used to be that you have to have one organization per classroom. Um, and then you could have assignments in that classroom, but now you can have one organization for, um, you know, for as many classrooms as you want. And you'll see I, I've been playing around with this on and off, um, you know, so I have all these things that are approved. And right now I'm using the Spring 2019 organization that might be a little small to see. Um, and that's the organization that I'm using for this semester. Um, in retrospect, it was a mistake. I should have just named it Active, you know, or Active Classes. So I could just, you know, I don't, I'm going to have to submit a new request every semester so I think next time around I'm just gonna make it like active classes and then I'll just get rid of or archive all the repos in there as I'm going but anyway you just have to fill this out not a big deal notice that I have both email accounts my personal and my hunter email associated with um with the account and I've done that under github itself um, under github which we're gonna go to next anyway if you go to your settings somewhere in here uh, you know go to go to your settings you'll have a place to register multiple emails um, but anyway just go through all of this fill it out um, you know they, they say that um, it's like a five-day turnaround but it's like never been more than one day for me it's always been crazy fast um, so anyway uh, once you've done that you're ready to go and um, so the first thing is you have this organization and well actually let's go to uh, github classroom and what you'll want to do is you've made the organization and you'll want to make a new classroom and i'm not going to actually do this here but you just click on new classroom you click the organization you want to go with it and you type in the name of it and, and that's it you know bang you have a classroom um and then um and I that's, that's, that's this one that I just kind of created. I should manage this classroom and remove it. Uh, what is it? Spring. Uh, so yeah, I guess uh, it created it before I went to the, all those settings. And I made two classrooms, one for my uh, data structures class and one for my uh, CS1 class and um, I'll show you a few things with these in a minute uh, but when I want to make an assignment what I'll do is usually I'm going to want to make that assignment with some template files and so what I'll do over here is I'll go to let me go to just to clean things up this uh, spring organization and for any of these, like uh, I'll go to this one here. I just made this earlier today. This is the one we're going to work with. Um, and I'm calling it 235 Lab 1 Linked List Template. And this is what I'm going to give to the students. So it's going to have a README file, which has the instructions for the lab. 
um, and what I want them to do with this. So I'm telling, I'm going to want them to fill this out and whatever. And I still have to tweak this a little bit. Um, but for me, it's an org mode file, but you can use a markdown file if you want. Um, you know, other sample code that I want. So, you know, uh, you know testing, you know, this is incomplete, but I can give them a little testing file here, a little, a little for tests. I can, uh, should be a make file in here. I guess I did not add the make file. Um, so I would want to add the make file to this. I will have to do that a little bit later. Um, actually, I can do that now. Uh, so let's see. Uh, what is it? Okay, so I have the make file, and this is basically what I want to give them, etc. So now when I'm ready to make the assignment, I can go to the classroom in question. And in this case, we're going to go to lab one, which I already did. Um, but I could have clicked on new assignment, which was over here. But I'm going to go to assignment settings. And the reason I'm going to do that is this is what it looks like when you create the assignment. Uh, you first type in the name. Um, the prefix, the repository prefix, which you'll see in a minute, public or private. Usually I make this private, but I'm making this one public because it's going to be a, uh, a lab assignment where they can assist each other, uh, you know, in class. Um, I do not give them admin permissions to their repository, uh, so they can't, uh, you know, they can, I guess, can't do a whole lot with it. Um, the uh, URL so I can email it out. And this is the starter code. And this will auto complete as you type it. So I start out with spring 2019, and, you know, and it just gives, and I do a template in there and it finds it, and then a deadline. So the assignment is ready to go. Um, and all I have to do is uh, notice there are no repositories in here. So I'm going to copy the invitation link. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up an incognito window and go here and I'm going to log in under a second account I have and this is what your students will do and now I can accept the assignment so this is just going to go for a second and I can now go to here and I've got this, you know, now I have, and notice it's, this is the prefix plus the Zemanski. So I'm going to clone this, and I'm going to do this with HTTPS, because I don't know if the SSH one is, well, let me see if this works. Uh, um, I don't think it'll work, so I haven't set up the keys for this account. So let me just git clone this. Okay, there we go. Um, and 235 lab one's a man scam and there we have it and we are ready to go um, at this point if I come back here to the assignment I don't think I'll see anything yet oh now there I do um, so I now see this and this is the man scam stuff and I can view this repository and nothing really interesting here uh, but let's 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 do some stuff here let me let me open up an Emacs window let me go to temp uh, 235, that's this guy here. And let me just open up the, the readme and add my name. And let's say I get rid of that. And let's, I'll, I'll do uh, add some stuff here. Normally I'd be writing actual code and testing it and stuff, but I'm gonna save that. Uh, I know I could use mgit, but I'll talk about that in a minute. So let's commit change readme get push and let's say I'm going to continue to work and um, and I'll do that and I'll come over to here and I added some more stuff uh, here whatever and we'll get rid of a little bit here we'll do that and then we will commit and I'm not going to change the messages but basically I'm just working on this and working on my project and whenever I do it's going to change, you know, uh, some stuff here, et cetera. All these changes are going to go in here. Um, what I can then do is I can also come into here and 
let's say I didn't open this window, um, notice that this is, you know, Zaman scam. You know, this is my one submission. Now, of course, notice I have five commits here. Uh, you know, I can click on that. It gives me information about the commits. I can click on this. I can view the repo. In this case, I can see uh, the changes that have happened within here. And I can do this all from within this GitHub interface, which is pretty cool. Um, so now my students are going to be working on this. And over time, this is going to populate up. Um, and then later on, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to grab all of these to grade them. So what I'll do here is going back to the uh, GitHub classroom link. Um, I just back out of this, I guess. Uh, where am I? Ah, we'll just go to classroom. Come back in this way. And I'm just going to move this off. Um, go to my classroom here, go back to this assignment, and at some point I'm going to want to download all the repos, so I'll just do download repos, and this should open in a second classroom assistant, which it did, but off window, and if you don't have it, you can just download it here. And so I will now log in. It opened the login window over here. And now I'm going to grab this URL for the reap for that. I will grab the assignment. Um, now it has Zaman scam, but if there are multiple people here, it would be like all the submissions. Um, I will just unarchive this or archive this down into temp. And now it's done. And I click on view, and now it views it in the file browser, but I usually don't use that. I'm just going to close that out. So if I navigate to my temp directory, and I now go to 235, notice I have this um, lab one Zaman scam, which is the one that I pulled out as Zaman scam as my secondary account. But here is the entire lab that um, with the due date, well, actually three, four, okay, I don't know what those numbers are. Um, but And here in it is my one repo. And of course, if there were 20 submissions, there would be 20 repos in there. But this is the Git repo, and I could go into it. So let me just kill this buffer. And let me write my font bigger. And temp 235, which one is it? It's this guy. Oh, not that one. Um, 235. Was it 235? Why is it not there? Temp 235. Oh, there I just had to refresh that. Lab one. There's a man skim. Bring in the README. And now I am in here and I can do whatever I want. And what I'll normally do is I'll look at the files this way, but I'll normally run scripts for grading. And so um so what I'll do is something like, you know, for I in LS do, you know, C D I, you know, and make test and I mean, there's only one repo in here, um, but I'll do little for loops off of the shell where I will then go into each repo, compile the tests and run them, um, and just do the output into a little report, and then I will just go into the repos for the ones that didn't work. Um, now, another nice thing here is you can also do stuff like this. Let me bring this window back over again, and let's say that... Um, you know, I'm the, uh, I, I need some help from the teacher. I could email my teacher, but I could also be like, um, I have a new issue. And hell, something doesn't work. And you know, this is an issue. And so I can make the issue. And what will happen is um, in my email, you know, I will get the issue. So, you know, this is a really nice way, and I don't have to keep this email, because if I go over to GitHub Classroom for, you know, and view the, uh, the repository for Zaman Scam, you know, the issue is here. Uh, you know, and you can also do with pull requests and whatever, and, you, you know, so all of this GitHub goodness is all built in. So this could be really nice for issue tracking, um, you know, sending information back and forth with students, etc. Really, 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 really cool thing. And you, of course, can do it in reverse as well. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I don't have to deal with this right now. But as a teacher, I could also put an issue in, send it back to the student. So very cool thing. Now, the last thing I want to show you with this is you can also do things like, um, since it's just a Git repo, I can just do things like, uh, git time machine and 
by using Git Time Machine, I can use the next and the previous to go through different versions of any file. So notice that I'm using the N and the pre and the, uh, the N and the P for next and previous under Emacs, and I can easily see what the students did or what the student did over time. So um, another thing you can do is you can just use Magit if you want. Uh, so let's look at recent commits. No recent commits here. Oh, hello. The early, sorry, tab for the recent commits. And, you know, I change readme, added make file, etc. You know, you know, so I can actually look at these and look at the diffs and stuff like that um, right here within Emacs. Now, of course, you don't need GitHub Classroom for this, but by using Git and GitHub and having it manage it, I can see exactly what's going on with the student's work and when things change. You know, I can see like, oh, these were deleted, this was added, you know, uh, this was added, etc. Really, really nice feature. So the other day, as I mentioned in my previous blog post, I had a student who had a problem and, um, you know, and I was able just to look at their GitHub repo because I had it using this system and I could quickly see, you know, what files were there, what files changed, and it just makes it really easy. So those are the basics for, um, for using GitHub Classroom. I don't, when I grade them, I use these scripty type things, you know, this like loop over and make the test, etc. cetera. Um, I don't do anything else with grades. I don't use grade scope or anything. What I do is I type in the grades into a, um, a Google spreadsheet with some notes and then I have a script with then emails all of the students their grades. So GitHub Classroom, I'm liking it a lot and I've always liked uh, GitHub and these tools, you know, along with Megit and the and Emacs for editing and all, all, all that good stuff. Um, I haven't done a group assignment yet with GitHub Classroom, but when I do, if there is anything um, more to it than just setting it up, that's interesting. I'll make another video for that. And yeah, so, um, so I hope hope that uh, you know this gives you kind of a flavor of what you can do and I really encourage you to check it out a really nice lightweight tool okay so that's it